What's up guys, Jeff here. I'm very excited about this week's video because I want to talk about one of the things I'm most passionate about uh, that you guys ask me about a lot, me and Alyssa a lot with our kids, and that is the concept of family. And I wanna talk about kind of what I think is the secret sauce to a healthy, thriving, Jesus-loving family. But what's funny is I just started thinking about this specifically even more so um, by reading a specific book called Why I Didn't Rebel. But I'm gonna talk about that later at the end. Amazing book, you need to pick it up. You guys need to listen to it if you listen to audiobook. And the secret sauce I like to call it is that you need to think of your family as a team. And now I know that sounds not mind-blowing in any sense. Everyone thinks every family is a team, but I mean really a team, like in the same way that you look at sports as a team um, or academic teams or anything where a co-working space where you're coming together for a bigger purpose, that is the secret sauce to a family that thrives. And here's why, because when you see yourself as a team, you do a couple things differently that a lot of families don't tend to do. The first thing I want to talk about is that family teams, when you think about a family as a team, you practice. Now, I know that sounds weird, uh, but that was one of the things our mentors encourage us, us with the most, and that is that families practice when you see yourself as a team, right? Just like when I played baseball, I would go to practice, it took work, you would do the drills, do the things, so that then when you got to the game, you kind of, it was second nature. And I think seeing family as a team and seeing the need for practice, whether that's disciplinary practice, like let's go through all the things um, that we wanna make sure we train you in, and that's what we're doing right now in the toddler stage, so that then when we get to the game, out in public or in a different scenario, it seems to be second nature, right? And so practice in that sense. Um, I think practice in the sense of um, bigger decisions, right? Like I want, when our kids are older, I want them to practice with money. I want us to go through money practices so that then when they're 19, they actually have a little bit better substantial worldview about how money operates because they've practiced. And so first thing, do you see yourself as a team that needs practice? And that's a good thing that actually sets you up well for the future. The second thing I wanna talk about is that when you're a team, that means there's coaches, right? I've never been on a team where there hasn't been a leader or coaches. And I think parents need to see themselves as coaches. I love that imagery. Me and Alyssa use that so much in our family. Of And, and you know bad coaches and you know good coaches, by the way. And so we're talking about good coaches. Good coaches are the ones that are gentle yet firm. They constantly know how to address hearts. And they're basically a good coach, in my opinion, when I played baseball, was the one who could get the best out of their players, right? And that usually is because you knew they cared and they loved, but they also still held held a high standard. And so I think coach uh, parents need to see themselves as coaches. That's one way to kind of help yourselves see yourselves as a team is do you see yourself as a coach? Now coaches, you're the leader, right? Like if you just, if the kids, when I played baseball and I showed up to practice and the coach and we we're like, oh, what are we going to do today? And the coach goes, I don't know. What do you guys want to do today? Yeah, we'd kind of be like, oh, that's weird, right? We probably wouldn't have the best chance of winning. And so I think it helps, specifically dads out there, I want to challenge you guys. I think sometimes dads can sometimes take the more passive um, back seat in the leadership of the family. And usually it's the mom that's thinking of all the plans, all the ideas, the, the goals they have for the family. And I think it should be both. I don't think it should be one or the other. I think it should be both. And so dads, you have an opportunity to be a coach to your family as a team where you can step in, where you can um, metaphorically think of drills and goals and purpose and a place you want to take your kids, right? And unify the family for a bigger purpose of God's glory. And the third and last thing, which I love, which actually came specifically from the book and Rebecca's writing is um, seeing the team as a, seeing the family as a team, not a club. And that distinction I love, because she said, Families can do both. Sometimes families, even good, loving Jesus families are like clubs when they should be more like teams. And what she means by that is sometimes um, clubs, you know, they, 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 don't, they really are all about just being welcoming and loving and having fun and making it a great time and everything just being enjoyable. But at the end of the day, when I was in clubs, I think I was in some in middle school and stuff, there's no bigger purpose. There's no goal. There's no finish line. It's a little bit insulated where you're all looking at each other rather than looking out at the goal. When a team comes together, right, rallies, you fight for each other, you love each other, you die for each other, you serve each other, so that then when you have that, you can then go outward and do something great and big and have purpose. And God gives every single family that purpose. The question is a lot of us aren't living in it. A lot of us are more like clubs where we just wanna have fun and enjoy our time when God actually wants to bring you guys together as a team to go play the games of life, to actually go out there and compete and leave it all out on the field and sweat and get dirty and serve at your peop uh, serve other people, serve your neighbors, love each other. Um, and that I love that distinction that Rebecca made between family as a team 
and a club. So those are the three things I have for you guys this week. Nothing mind blowing, but hopefully it's encouraging. It's helpful. Love you guys. And I'll talk to you guys later. What's up guys, thanks so much for watching. I wanna give a huge shout out to this week's sponsor and that is Audible. You guys know I love Audible. They enable you to listen to audiobooks anywhere, on the go. I listen on my iPhone, iPad, they're incredible. And what I love, especially now that it's the beginning of the year, I'm doubling down trying to read and listen to as much as I can right now uh, to make a better me and to just continue to be encouraged and to learn. So here's the fun thing for you guys. Audible wanted to hook up you guys, the audience, with a special free book when you sign up for a 30-day trial membership. They're incredible, they're amazing. I urge you to do that. And you can get the free audiobook with the trial membership at audible.com slash Jeff. I'll put it right here on the screen, J-E-F-F. -F. And what's cool now, what you can do is you can text Jeff, J-E-F-F, -F, to 500-500 for the same thing if you live in the U.S. They're awesome. I love them. They have an unmatched audio selection. You can literally download the book right now after watching this video and start listening. It's that easy and it's free for your first audio book. And so I want to do my favorite part of the end of the video, and that is to recommend to you a book or an audio book to listen to. And this month, I want to recommend Why I Didn't Rebel. It's incredible. It's amazing. I'll put a picture right up here. Rebecca just goes through, she's a 22 year old writing this book, how does she kept on the straight and narrow and how she stayed faithfully following Jesus her whole life when I think the stat is, you know, 80% of us kind of after high school go off the deep end in some sense. So incredibly encouraging as a peer, also encouraging as a parent, um, thinking about these things, you know, 10, 15 years down the road when our kids are older. It's incredible. You need to read the book. You can get the free trial and the free audiobook down there in the description. Love you guys. It's all I got. Talk to you later. Peace.